Okay. All right. So we are picking up where we left off last week and we are going to be starting with module six. So this is still part of unit two. Um, we're just finishing up this week. So we're kind of leaving, um, starting with where we left off in terms of thinking about how we need to use science and data to understand human behavior. Psychology is not just something we, we make grand old assumptions about and then say, yep, this is true. That's fact. You have to use science to understand this. So we're going to get further into experimentation, but also thinking about how data and numbers um, really kind of give us a story about what's going on. So um, first in module six, and this is a little bit of a longer module, so it's kind of broken down to two parts. And the first thing we're going to be talking about is this idea of correlation. So you might have seen this word before, but may not know what it means. So correlation is basically this measure of how closely things change together. So it's looking at two variables and how they change together. So in correlational research, we basically are using data from studies to figure out how closely um, two things vary together, mean change together, and thus predict how well, well one predicts the other. So I'm going to be using this example um, as we go throughout these next few slides of a study that you could do about, let's say you wanted to study weight gain and um, TV watching. So those are your two variables and you're trying to see how they, how they vary with each other. So you might make a prediction and say you think that um, the more TV you watch, maybe the more weight you are, the more weight you gain or the heavier you are. And then you're gonna try to then use this data, whether you're doing an experiment or you're using a survey or whatever it is, you're then going to look at it and see how does that actually, is that true? Do these numbers go together? Do they correlate? And in this correlational research, we kind of break down correlation into a few different components. We're going to break it down into negative or direct correlation. Sorry, <laughs> positive or direct correlation, negative or inverse correlation, and then also strong and weak correlation. So with positive correlation, this basically means that these things are going the same direction. So you have two variables and they're both rising. So for example, usually if you are taller, you tend to weigh a little bit more just because you have more body mass, right? And if you're shorter, you tend to weigh a little bit less. So they're going the same direction. Um, I'm going to try to draw this here. So the way I like to think about this is I think about it as arrows. Whenever I'm doing positive correlation, if I have two things. So let's say, for example, I did a study and I found I'm looking at my numbers and I find that people who watch tons of TV. So the TV watching, the amount of TV watching is going up. Their weight is also going up. That's going to be a positive correlation because they're going the same way. Um, erasing that now. So that's what that means. Additionally, though, let's say I also, let's say I find that people who watch, decrease the amount of TV they're watching also decrease the amount of weight they have. That's also a positive correlation. And I want to make that clear because even though the arrows are going down, which you might associate with negative, they're going the same direction. They are directly correlated. They're going the same way. When we get to negative correlation, you'll see how this is different. So again, with positive, it just really means that they're going the same way and that they are both saying that this is they're positively correlated because they're doing kind of the same thing, the same kind of action. So with negative correlation, if I can get there, you have a different thing. So this is an inverse relation. So if you use the word inverse in math, right? So they're going opposite directions. So it's when two variables in which one variable increases and the other decreases. So you're going to have a chart going like this. So instead for this one, um, I would think, so let's say increased TV watching, wow, that is the worst arrow ever, <laughs> leads to decreased weight. Maybe that's what your data finds. These arrows are going the opposite directions. They are inversely related. So that's going to be a negative correlation. Okay. I, I know these can be kind of confusing and you'll get to practice it in the homework assignment or sorry, the check for understanding today. So please, please, please ask questions if you don't get this. Okay, so 
On top of that, you also have strong versus weak correlation. So when something is strongly correlated, it means all the data is really close together. Um, and it's close to that line that you saw. When it's weakly correlated, correlated it's far away. So for example, this would be a, a strong negative correlation because the numbers are close together. They're all really near the line. A one that would be a weak correlation would look more like this. So let's say you have your line, some dots really close to it, but then you have like over here, that would be not so strong. That would be a weak correlation. And that would be weak because it's basically saying you only have a few things that show this relationship. Whereas this one, you have lots of dots that show the relationship. You can't rely on this one. This one, who knows what's going on with that? And that one, and that one. They're not really strongly connected. So that's going to be a weak correlation. It's still negative, but it's also weak. You can also have a weak positive or a strong positive correlation. They just go the opposite direction. So on top of that, we can't always trust, can't always trust data because it's just a number. And a lot of times that number relies on a lot of different things that you can't see in it. So if you see the word here, like illusory looks like the word illusion. So it's not real, right? So this is when we believe there's a relationship between things but that may not be why the relationship is there and it may not actually exist. So going back to our TV and weight um, one, thinking about TV and weight gain, um, you maybe you see that weight is going up as people are watching more TV, but you're not thinking about the other factors that are playing into this. So for example, what if the reason somebody's gaining weight, even though they're watching more TV, is because they're really depressed and your body doesn't process things as well when you're depressed. So that's why they're gaining weight. Or maybe they're just eating tons of food or they're not exercising. So there are other things that you would have to investigate to find out maybe why is this person gaining weight or why are they watching so much TV? Lots of other things play into it. The big thing to remember with correlation is that correlation does not mean causation. So just what like I said, just because somebody's gaining weight, does it doesn't mean that that is because they're watching lots of TV. So you can't always say that these things go together. You have to understand lots of other things as well. So the second part of this module is all about experiments. So experimental research is different from surveys and all those other things, because with this one, you are actually manipulating things. You are in charge of the data that you are controlling. And with a survey or with all those other things, you are relying on the other person and how you plan this. But with an experiment, you really are manipulating things to observe some effect on behavior. So in experiments, we have two different groups. So you're setting up an experiment, right? Let's say your experiment is, I don't know, think of any experiment that you could potentially want to do about why humans act a certain way. Um, your experimental group is the one that's being exposed to the treatment. They're the one that you're saying, you're going to do this thing. You're changing your behavior. So let's say you, let's say you even want to like test a group. Um, you're trying a new medication for anxiety or something. The experimental group is the one that is going to get the new drug that you're testing. You want to see if these people are less anxious because they get this drug. The control group is the one that is not exposed to the treatment. So you could either not give this group the treatment and just see like how well they do, or you could give them a placebo one, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, but they are not getting the actual treatment. They're not getting the change thing. So in science, you've probably learned about independent and dependent variable several times over, but this is really important. And these terms come, over, come up on the exam over and over and over again. And without doubt, they will be on the free response questions, which you will be working on today. So the independent variable is the one that doesn't depend on another variable. It's independent. It doesn't need somebody else, right? And the dependent variable is the one that does depend on another variable. It's the outcome. It's the data you're measuring. 
So for example, in the TV weight experiment, the dependent variable would be the amount of weight gained because that's the thing, the weight would be depending on the amount of TV watching. That's what you're guessing. So let's say you were actually doing this experiment and you set it up and you're like, your hypothesis is that if people watch tons of TV, they're going to gain weight. So you say you put people together in a house for a week and you tell one group that they have to watch a certain amount of TV a week and you tell another group they have to watch less TV and then you see if they've gained weight in a week. That weight is the dependent variable, the data that you're measuring, D dependent data. You're trying to see, did they actually gain some weight? Whereas with the independent variable, that's the thing that doesn't depend on this. This would be the TV watching. It's the thing that you're already just doing. So in any study, um, you can also um, use a placebo. A placebo is like, it's kind of, it's like a thing that you are giving to somebody, even though it actually isn't going to change their behavior, but they're thinking it does. So um, the placebo effect is when experimental results ca are caused by just your expectations of what might happen. So for example, if a doctor gave, gives you a pill that they tell you will help prevent weight gain, but it actually isn't a pill that's going to do that, it's just like a sugar pill. Um, and you're like, all of a sudden you're losing weight. You're like, wow, it's this amazing pill. This is what's doing it. But actually it's not. You are maybe just happier and your body's processing things faster. Or maybe it's because you're working out more or whatever it might be. But you perceive that this is happening. So in an experiment, um, psychologists can also give one group a placebo effect. So for example, if like I'm going back to the anxiety study I said earlier, they could give one group the actual pill for treating anxiety. And then the other group, they could give this random sugar pill. It does nothing. But if both groups show that they're less anxious, you could say that maybe it's because the other group thinks that they're, the placebo group thinks that they're getting better and maybe they're just happier, they're doing more things or whatever it might be. Um, as kind of mentioned before with the illusory correlation, there are always confounding variables in an experiment. So a factor, this is basically when something else other than the independent variable may cause an effect on the experiment, meaning there's something else that confounds. Confounds means confuses. So confusing variable is a way to think of this as well. It means that there's something else that is causing this thing to happen. So going back to our TV weight experiment, maybe it's the type of food they're eating that affects their weight gain and it's not the TV, but you didn't measure that. So you will always have to talk, think about the limitations, the things that your experiment couldn't answer for. So that's pretty much it for module six. Um, there's one other thing I didn't mention there and it is a double blind procedure. And what that is, is when you're doing this experiment, um, sometimes you might want to know how something works, but you don't want to know which group is getting the treatment. So for example, with the, the anxiety example, let's say me as the researcher, I have two kinds of pills, right? And I don't even want to know which group is getting it. So I am blind to it. So I am just randomly saying, all right, this group is going that way. This group is that going that way. I don't know which pills are which. You give one group one pill. You give another group the other pill. They don't know what they're getting either. You just say you're getting something and this is what you're doing. So you're both blind to it. And the reason you do this is because you it helps there from being any sort of bias in the experiment and you kind of prefacing things the way that you might think they need to happen. So that's one thing I didn't mention that does come up in the module six reading that is really important and does typically come up on the AP exam. Um, so that's it for module six. Please make sure that you go into your assignment and complete the guided notes. Um, it's a little bit longer for the guided notes, but I know this one was just has more information in it. For the check for understanding, it's a little bit shorter here, um, but you are just highlighting whether you think these variables are directly or inversely related, aka a positive or negative correlation. That's it for module six. There's actually not going to be a module seven guided note, um, and then we're going to move on to module eight.